Jewish communities have existed in the territory of Ukraine from the time of Kievan Rus late 9th to mid 13th century and developed many of the most distinctive modern Jewish theological and cultural traditions such as Hasidism. According to the World Jewish Congress, the Jewish community in Ukraine constitute the third biggest Jewish community in Europe and the fifth biggest in the world. While at times it flourished, at other times the Jewish community faced periods of persecution and anti Semitic discriminatory policies. In the Ukrainian people's Republic, Yiddish was a state language along with Ukrainian and Russian. At that time there was created the Jewish National Union and the community was granted an autonomous status. Yiddish was used on Ukrainian currency in 1917-1920. Before World War II, a little under one-third of Ukraine's urban population consisted of Jews who were the largest national minority in Ukraine. Ukrainian Jews are comprised by a number of sub-groups, including Ashkenazi Jews, Mountain Jews, Bukharan Jews, Crimean Karaites, Krimchik Jews and Georgian Jews. In the westernmost area of Ukraine, Jews were mentioned for the first time in 1030. An army of Cossacks and Crimean Tatars massacred and took into captivity a large number of Jews, Roman Catholic Christians and Uniate Christians in 1648–49. Recent estimates range from 15,000 to 30,000 Jews killed or taken captive, and 300 Jewish communities totally destroyed. During the 1821 anti-Jewish riots in Odessa after the death of the Greek Orthodox Patriarch in Constantinople, 14 Jews were killed. Some sources claim this episode as the first pogrom. At the start of 20th century, anti-Jewish pogroms continue to occur. When part of the Russian Empire in 1911-1913, the anti-Semitic attitudes can be seen in the number of blood libel cases. In 1915, the government expelled thousands of Jews from the empire border areas, during the 1917 Russian Revolution and the ensuing Russian Civil War, an estimated 31,071 Jews were killed during 1918–1920. During the establishment of the Ukrainian People's Republic 1917 pogroms continued to be perpetrated on Ukrainian territory. In Ukraine, the number of civilian Jews killed during the period was between 35 and 50,000. Pogroms erupted in January 1919 in the northwest province of Volhynia and spread to many other regions of Ukraine. Massive pogroms continued until 1921. The actions of the Soviet government by 1927 led to a growing antisemitism in the area. Total civilian losses during World War II and German occupation in Ukraine are estimated at 7 million, including over a million Jews shot and killed by the Einsatzgruppen and by their many local Ukrainian supporters in the western part of Ukraine. Ukraine had 840,000 Jews in 1959, a decrease of almost 70% from 1941 within Ukraine's current borders. Ukraine's Jewish population declined significantly during the Cold War. In 1989, Ukraine's Jewish population was only slightly more than half of what it was 30 years earlier in 1959. The majority of the Jews who remained in Ukraine in 1989 left Ukraine and moved to other countries mostly to Israel in the 1990s during and after the collapse of communism. Antisemitic graffiti and violence against Jews are still a problem in Ukraine. <laughs> Kievan Rus by the 11th century, Byzantine Jews of Constantinople had familial, cultural, and theological ties with the Jews of Kiev. For instance, some 11th century Jews from Kievan Rus participated in an anti karaite assembly held in either Thessaloniki or Constantinople. One of the three Kievan city gates in the times of Yaroslav the Wise was called Zidovsky Judaic. Galicia Volhynia. Topic. In Halicina Galicia, the westernmost area of Ukraine, Jews were mentioned for the first time in 1030. From the second part of the 14th century, they were subjects of the Polish kings, and magnates. The Jewish population of Halicina and Bukovina, part of Austria-Hungary, was extremely large, it made up 5% of the global Jewish population. Topic. Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth Topic. 
From the founding of the Kingdom of Poland in the 10th century through the creation of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth in 1569, Poland was considered one of the most diverse countries in Europe. It became home to one of the world's largest and most vibrant Jewish communities. The Jewish community in the territory of Ukraine proper during the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth became one of the largest and most important ethnic minority groups in Ukraine. Cossack Uprising and the Deluge The Ukrainian Cossack Hetman Bodin Komelnitsky led a Cossack Uprising, known as Komelnitsky Uprising 1648 under the premise that the Poles had sold them as slaves, "...into the hands of the accursed Jews." At that time it is estimated that the Jewish population in Ukraine numbered 51,325. An army of Cossacks and Crimean Tatars massacred and took into captivity a large number of Jews, Roman Catholics and Uniates in 1648–49. Recent estimates range from 15,000 to 30,000 Jews killed or taken captive, and 300 Jewish communities totally destroyed. <laughs> Rise of Hasidism and internal struggles the Cossack Uprising and the Deluge left a deep and lasting impression on the Jewish social and spiritual life. In this time of mysticism and overly formal rabbinism came the teachings of Israel ben Eliezer, known as the Baal Shem Tov, or Besht, 1698-1760, which had a profound effect on the Jews of Eastern Europe. His disciples taught and encouraged a new fervent brand of Judaism, related to Kabbalah, known as Hasidism. The rise of Hasidism had a great influence on the rise of Haredi Judaism, with a continuous influence through its many Hasidic dynasties. A radically different movement was started by Jacob Frank in the middle of the 18th century. Frank's teachings were extremely unorthodox such as purification through transgression, as well as adoption of elements of Christianity, and he was excommunicated along with his numerous followers. They eventually converted to Catholicism. Russian Empire and Austrian rule The traditional measures of keeping the Russian Empire free of Jews were hindered when the main territory of Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was annexed during the partitions of Poland. During the second and the third partitions, large populations of Jews were taken over by the Russian Empire, and Catherine the Great established the Pale of Settlement that included Congress Poland and Crimea. During the 1821 anti-Jewish riots in Odessa after the death of the Greek Orthodox Patriarch in Constantinople, 14 Jews were killed. Some sources claim this episode as the first pogrom, while according to others such as the Jewish Encyclopedia, 1911 ed., say the first pogrom was the 1859 riot in Odessa. The term became common after a wave of large-scale anti-Jewish violence swept southern Russian Empire, including Ukraine, between 1881 and 1884, after Jews were blamed for the assassination of Alexander II. In May 1882, Alexander III of Russia introduced temporary regulations called May Laws that stayed in effect for more than 30 years, until 1917. Systematic policies of discrimination, strict quotas on the number of Jews allowed to obtain education and professions caused widespread poverty and mass emigration. In 1886, an edict of expulsion was applied to the Jews of Kiev. In 1893–1894, some areas of Crimea were cut out of the Pale. When Alexander III died in Crimea on 20 October 1894, according to Simon Dubno, "...as the body of the deceased was carried by railway to St. Petersburg, the same rails were carrying the Jewish exiles from Yalta to the Pale. The reign of Alexander III ended symbolically. It began with pogroms and concluded with expulsions." Odessa became the home of a large Jewish community during the 19th century, and by 1897 Jews were estimated to comprise some 37% of the population. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Political activism and emigration. Topic: Persons of Jewish origin were overrepresented in the Russian revolutionaries' leadership. 
However, most of them were hostile to traditional Jewish culture and Jewish political parties, and were loyal to the Communist Party's atheism and proletarian internationalism, and committed to stamp out any sign of Jewish cultural particularism. Counter revolutionary groups, including the Black Hundreds, opposed the revolution with violent attacks on socialists and pogroms against Jews. There was also a backlash from the conservative elements of society, notably in spasmodic anti Jewish attacks. Around 500 were killed in a single day in Odessa. Nicholas II of Russia himself claimed that 90% of revolutionaries were Jews. <laughs> Early 20th century At the start of 20th century, anti-Jewish pogroms continued to occur in cities and towns across the Russian Empire such as Kishinev, Kiev, Odessa, and many others. Numerous Jewish self-defense groups were organized to prevent the outbreak of pogroms among which the most notorious one was under the leadership of Mishka Yapinchik in Odessa. In 1905, a series of pogroms erupted at the same time as the revolution against the government of Nicholas II. The chief organizers of the pogroms were the members of the Union of the Russian People commonly known as the Black Hundreds. From 1911 to 1913, the anti-Semitic tenor of the period was characterized by a number of blood libel cases accusations of Jews murdering Christians for ritual purposes. One of the most famous was the two-year trial of Menahem Mendel Bayliss, who was charged with the murder of a Christian boy low 1993, 284-90. The trial was showcased by the authorities to illustrate the perfidy of the Jewish population. From March to May 1915, in the face of the German army, the government expelled thousands of Jews from the empire's border areas, which coincide with the Pale of Settlement. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> World War I aftermath. Topic: during the 1917 Russian Revolution and the ensuing Russian Civil War, an estimated 70,000 to 250,000 Jewish civilians were killed in the atrocities throughout the former Russian Empire in this period. In the territories of modern Ukraine an estimated 31,071 during 1918-1920. Ukrainian People's Republic during the establishment of the Ukrainian People's Republic 1917-1921, pogroms continued to be perpetrated on Ukrainian territory. In the Ukrainian People's Republic, Yiddish was an official language. And all government posts and institutions had Jewish members. A ministry for Jewish affairs was established, it was the first modern state to do so. All rights of Jewish culture were guaranteed. All Jewish parties abstained or voted against the Central Narada's Fourth Universal of January 25, 1918 which was aimed at breaking ties with Bolshevik Russia and proclaiming a sovereign Ukrainian state. Since all Jewish parties were strongly against Ukrainian independence, only in Ukraine, the number of civilian Jews killed during the period was estimated to be between 35 and 50,000. Archives declassified after 1991 provide evidence of a higher number, in the period from 1918 to 1921. According to incomplete data, at least 100,000 Jews were killed in Ukraine in the pogroms. The Ukrainian People's Republic did issue orders condemning pogroms and attempted to investigate them. But it lacked authority to stop violence. In the last months of its existence it lacked any power of creating social stability. Among prominent Ukrainian statesmen of this period were Moise Rafes, Pinkas Krasny, Abram Revutsky, Moishe Zilberfarb, and many others. See General Secretariat of Ukraine The autonomy of Ukraine was openly greeted by the Ukrainian Jewish Volodymyr Zabotinsky. Between April and December 1918 the Ukrainian People's Republic was non-existent and overthrown by the Ukrainian state of Pavlo Skoropadsky who ended the experiment in Jewish autonomy. Provisional government of Russia and Soviets The February 1917 revolution brought a liberal provisional government to power in the Russian Empire. On 21 March, 3 April, the government removed all discrimination based upon ethnic, religious or social grounds. The pale was officially abolished. The removal of the restrictions on Jews' 
Geographical mobility and educational opportunities led to a migration to the country's major cities. One week after the 25th of October, the 7th of November 1917 Bolshevik Revolution, the new government proclaimed the Declaration of the Rights of the Peoples, Nations of Russia, promising all nationalities the rights of equality, self-determination, and secession. Jews were not specifically mentioned in the declaration, reflecting Lenin. S view that Jews did not constitute a nation in 1918 the RSFSR Council of Ministers issued a decree entitled on the separation of church from state and school from church depriving religious communities of the status of juridical persons the right to own property and the right to enter into contracts the decree nationalized the property of religious communities and banned their assessment of religious tuition as a result, religion could be taught or studied only in private. On the 1st of February 1918, the Commissariat for Jewish National Affairs was established as a subsection of the Commissariat for Nationality Affairs. It was mandated to establish the dictatorship of the proletariat in the Jewish streets and attract the Jewish masses to the regime while advising local and central institutions on Jewish issues. The Commissariat was also expected to fight the influence of Zionist and Jewish Socialist parties. On 27 July 1918 the Council of People's Commissars issued a decree stating that antisemitism is "...fatal to the cause of the revolution." Pogroms were officially outlawed. On 20 October 1918 the Jewish section of the CPSU was established for the party's Jewish members, its goals were similar to those of the Jewish Commissariat. Pogroms in Western Ukraine the pogroms which erupted in January 1919 in the northwest province of Volhynia spread during February and March to the cities, towns, and villages of many other regions of Ukraine. After Sarny it was the turn of Ovrich, northwest of Kiev. In Tetyev on 25 March, approximately 4,000 Jews were murdered, half in a synagogue set ablaze by Cossack troops under Colonels Kurovsky, Cherkowsky, and Shlidoshenko. Then Vashilkov 6 and 7 April. In Dubovo, the 17th of June, 800 Jews were decapitated in assembly line fashion. According to David A. Chapin, the town of Proskurov, now Kamelnitsky, near the city of Sudelkov, was the site of the worst atrocity committed against Jews this century before the Nazis. Massive pogroms continued until 1921. Topic: <laughs> Pogroms across Podolia. Topic. On 15 February 1919, during the Ukrainian-Soviet War, Otaman Semesenko initiated a pogrom proskurov in which a large number of Jews were massacred on Shabbat from 3 p.m., until next Sunday, Saturday. Semesenko claimed that the pogrom was in retaliation for a previous Bolshevik uprising, which he believed was led by Jews, according to the Pinkasim. Record books the murdered in the pogrom included 390 men, 309 women and 76 children. The number of wounded exceeded 500. Two weeks later the Order 131 was published in the central newspaper by the head of Directorate of Ukraine. In it Simon Petlyura denounced such actions and eventually executed Otaman Semesenko by firing squad in November 1919. The Semesenko's brigade was disarmed and dissolved. This event is especially remarkable for being used to justify Schwarzbird for assassination of the Ukrainian leader in 1926. Although no facts of Petlyura's direct involvement was ever proven, Schwarzbird was acquitted in light of revenge. The series of Jewish pogroms in various places around Ukraine culminated in the Kiev pogroms of 1919 between June and October of that year. Bolsheviks, USSR consolidation of power In July 1919, the Central Jewish Commissariat dissolved the Kahilat Jewish Communal Councils. The Kahilat had provided a number of social services to the Jewish community. From 1919 1920, Jewish parties and Zionist organizations were driven underground as the communist government sought to abolish all potential opposition. 
The Yevsektsiya Jewish section of the Soviet Communist Party was at the forefront of the anti-religious campaigns of the 1920s that led to the closing of religious institutions, the breakup of religious communities and the further restriction of access to religious education. To that end a series of "'community trials' against the Jewish religion were held. The last known such trial, on the subject of circumcision, was held in 1928 in Kharkiv. At the same time, the body also worked to establish a secular identity for the Jewish community. In 1921, a large number of Jews in the newly formed USSR emigrated to Poland, as they were entitled by a peace treaty in Riga to choose the country they preferred. Several hundred thousand joined the already numerous Jewish minority of the Polish Second Republic. On 31 January 1924, the Commissariat for Nationalities Affairs was disbanded. On 29 August 1924 an official agency for Jewish resettlement, the Commission for the Settlement of Jewish Toilers on the Land was established. KOMZET studied, managed and funded projects for Jewish resettlement in rural areas. A public organization, the Society for the Agricultural Organization of Working Class Jews in the USSR OZET, was created in January 1925 to help recruit colonists and support the colonization work of KOMZET. For the first few years the government encouraged Jewish settlements, particularly in Ukraine. Support for the project dwindled throughout the next decade. In 1938, OZET was disbanded. Following years of declining activity, on the 8th of April 1929, the new law on religious associations codified all previous religious legislation. All meetings of religious associations were to have their agenda approved in advance. Lists of members of religious associations had to be provided to the authorities. In 1930, the Yevsektsia was dissolved, and there was now no central Soviet Jewish organization. Although the body had served to undermine Jewish religious life, its dissolution led to the disintegration of Jewish secular life as well. Jewish cultural and educational organizations gradually disappeared. When the Soviet government reintroduced the use of internal passports in 1933, Jewish was considered an ethnicity for these purposes. The cities with the largest populations of Jews in 1926 were Odessa, 154,000 or 36.5% of the total population, Kiev, 140,500 or 27.3%, Kharkiv, 81,500 or 19.5%, and Dnipropetrovsk, 62,000 or 26.7%. In 1931 Lviv's Jewish population numbered 98,000 or 31.9%, and in Chernivtsi, 42,600 or 37.9%. As the Soviet government annexed territory from Poland, Romania both would be incorporated into the Ukrainian SSR after World War II and the Baltic states, roughly two million Jews became Soviet citizens. Restrictions on Jews that had existed in the formerly independent countries were now lifted. At the same time, Jewish organizations in the newly acquired territories were shut down and their leaders were arrested and exiled. Approximately 250,000 Jews escaped or were evacuated from the annexed territories to the Soviet interior prior to the Nazi invasion. <inaudible> <inaudible> Jewish settlement in Crimea in 1921, Crimea became an autonomous republic. In 1923, the All-Union Central Committee passed a motion to resettle a large number of the Jewish population from Ukrainian and Belarusian cities to Crimea. 50,400 families were moved. The plan to further resettle Jewish families was again confirmed by the Central Committee of the USSR on 15 July 1926 assigning 124 million rubles to the task and also receiving 67 million from foreign sources. The Soviet initiative of Jewish settlement in Crimea was opposed by Simon Petlera which he regarded as a provocation. This train of thought was supported by Arnold Margolin who stated that it would be dangerous to set up Jewish colonies there. The actions of the Soviet government for the supported settlement in Crimea with Jewish families by 1927 led to a growing antisemitism in the area. In 1944, it was suggested to Stalin to form a Jewish Soviet Socialist Republic in Crimea. However, the idea was not materialized. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> World War II. Topic: 
Total civilian losses during the war and German occupation in Ukraine are estimated at 7 million, including over a million Jews shot and killed by the Einsatzgruppen and by local Ukrainian supporters in various regions of Ukraine. Topic: <laughs> Post-war situation. Topic. Ukraine had 840,000 Jews in 1959, a decrease of almost 70% from 1941 within Ukraine's current borders. Ukraine's Jewish population declined significantly during the Cold War. In 1989, Ukraine's Jewish population was only slightly more than half of what it was 30 years earlier in 1959. The overwhelming majority of the Jews who remained in Ukraine in 1989 left Ukraine and moved to other countries mostly to Israel in the 1990s during and after the collapse of communism. Such new immigrants to Israel included artists, such as Marina Maximilian Blumen and street artist Klon, as well as activists, such as Gennady Ryger and Leah Shemtov. Topic. Independent Ukraine In 1989, a Soviet census counted 487,000 Jews living in Ukraine. Although discrimination by the state all but halted very soon after Ukrainian independence in 1991, Jews were still discriminated against in Ukraine during the 1990s. For instance, Jews were not allowed to attend some educational institutions. Antisemitism has since declined. According to the European Jewish Congress, as of 2014, there are 360,000 to 400,000 Jews in Ukraine. During the 1990s, some 266,300 Ukrainian Jews emigrated to Israel as part of a wave of mass emigration of Jews from the former Soviet Union to Israel in the 1990s. The 2001 Ukrainian census counted 106,600 Jews living in Ukraine. The number of Jews also dropped due to a negative birth rate. According to the Public Diplomacy and Diaspora Affairs Minister of Israel, early 2012 there were 250,000 Jews in Ukraine, half of them living in Kiev. By 1999 there were various Ukrainian Jewish organizations who disputed each other. Legitimacy. In November 2007, an estimated 700 Torah scrolls previously confiscated from Jewish communities during the Soviet Union. S. Communist rule were returned to Jewish communes in Ukraine by the state authorities. The Ukrainian Jewish Committee was established in 2008 in Kiev with the aim of concentrating the efforts of Jewish leaders in Ukraine on resolving the community's strategic problems and addressing socially significant issues. The committee declared its intention to become one of the world's most influential organizations protecting the rights of Jews and the most important and powerful structure protecting human rights in Ukraine. In the 2012 Ukrainian parliamentary elections, all Ukrainian Union Svoboda won its first seats in the Ukrainian parliament, garnering 10.44% of the popular vote and the fourth most seats among national political parties. This led to concern among Jewish organizations both inside and outside Ukraine who accused Svoboda of openly Nazi sympathies and being anti Semitic. In May 2013, the World Jewish Congress listed the party as neo Nazi. Svoboda itself has denied being anti Semitic. Anti Semitic graffiti and violence against Jews are still a problem in Ukraine. Since the February 2014 ending of the Euromaidan protests, unrest has gripped southern and eastern Ukraine, and this escalated in April 2014 into the ongoing war in the Donbass region. In April 2014, leaflets were distributed by three masked men as people left a synagogue in Donetsk, the biggest city in Donbass, ordering Jews to register to avoid losing their property and citizenship. Given that the leaders of the Jewish community of Ukraine support the Banderite junta in Kiev and are hostile to the Orthodox Donetsk Republic and its citizens. While many speak of a hoax concerning the authorship of the tracts which took on international proportions, the fact that these flyers were distributed remains undisputed. Due to the growing 2014 Ukrainian unrest, Ukrainian Jews making Aliyah from Ukraine reached 142% higher during the first four months of 2014 compared to the previous year. 800 people arrived in Israel over January to April, and over 200 signed up for May 2014. 
On the other hand, Chief Rabbi and Chabad emissary of Dnipropovosk Shmuel Kaminezki claimed late April 2014 Today, you can come to Dnipropovosk or Odessa and walk through the streets openly dressed as a Jew, with nothing to be afraid of. In August 2014, the Jewish Telegraphic Agency reported that the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews is organizing chartered flights to allow at least 150 Ukrainian Jews to immigrate to Israel in September. Jewish organizations within Ukraine, as well as the American Jewish Joint Distribution Committee, the Jewish Agency for Israel and the Jewish Community of Dnipropovosk, have arranged temporary homes and shelters for hundreds of Jews who fled the war in Donbass in eastern Ukraine. Hundreds of Jews have reportedly fled the cities of Luhansk and Donetsk, and Rabbi Yeshiel Eckstein stated in August 2014 that more Jews may leave for Israel if the situation in eastern Ukraine continues to deteriorate. In 2014, the Jews Ihor Kolomoyshki and Volodymyr Groisman were appointed governor of Dnipropovosk Oblast and Speaker of the Parliament, respectively. Groisman is Prime Minister of Ukraine since April 2016. Topic. Jewish communities As of 2012, Ukraine had the fifth largest Jewish community in Europe and the twelfth largest Jewish community in the world, behind South Africa and ahead of Mexico. The majority of Ukrainian Jews live in four large cities, Kiev about half of all Jews living in Ukraine, Dnipro, Kharkiv and Odessa. Rabbis Yaakov Dov Blyk of Kiev and Shmuel Kaminezki of Dnipropovosk are considered to be among the most influential foreigners in the country. Opened in October 2012 in Dnipro, the multifunctional menorah center is probably one of the biggest Jewish community centers in the world. There is a growing trend among some Israelis to visit Ukraine on a roots trip to follow the footsteps of Jewish life there. Among the place of interest are usually mentioned Kiev, where it is possible to trace the paths of Sholem Aleichem and Golda Meir, Zydemir and Korostyshev, where one can follow the steps of Chaim Naman Bialik, Berdichev, where one can trace the life of Mendel Makar Sforum, Rivna, where one can follow the course of Amos Oz, Buchich, the path of S.Y. Agnon, Drohobich, the place of Maurice Gottlieb and Bruno Schultz. Notable Ukrainian Jews Topic. Topic. See also. Topic. History of the Jews in Kiev. List of Galician Jews. Anti-Semitism in Ukraine. Galician Jews. History of the Jews in Carpathian Ruthenia. History of the Jews in the Soviet Union. Jewish roots in Ukraine and Moldova. Jewish gauchos Jewish Ukrainian relations in Eastern Galicia Jewish anti-fascist committee Luau ghetto Luau uprising Jerusalemka Three hairs Wooden synagogue Topic Notes Topic Topic References Topic Topic Further reading Topic Wiener, Miriam, Ukrainian State Archives in cooperation with Moldovan National Archives in cooperation with 1999 Jewish Roots in Ukraine and Moldova Pages from the Past and Archival Inventories Sakakis, N.J., Miriam Wiener Roots to Roots Foundation. ISBN 978-0-96-565081-6. OCLC 607423469. External links Chabad Lubavitch Centers in Ukraine Federation of Jewish Communities of the CIS Jewish Agricultural Colonies, adjacent towns and villages in southern Ukraine Jewish Agricultural Colonies of South Ukraine and Crimea webpage with names and maps of Jewish settlements Jewish Renaissance in Odessa Video of lecture on Jews of 17th century Ukraine by Dr. Henry Abramson Jewish Roots in Ukraine and Moldova at Roots to Roots Foundation 
Roots to Roots Foundation's archive database – Search includes Ukraine and Moldova Roots to Roots Foundation's image database – Search includes Ukraine and Moldova <laughs>